What fan theory do you 100% accept as true? Kermit caused 9-11, not really much of a fan theory though since it's unintentionally canon. Edit, realize this should be explained, in the 2002 TV film It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie, there's a part where an angel shows Kermit an alternate reality where he was never born. For whatever reason, the editors didn't really think about it, and continued to use footage with the Twin Towers still standing for this scene, however they aren't there in his original universe. Therefore, something that Kermit did in his life, did in fact cause 9-11 in Muppet lore. Andy's parents are in the middle of a divorce when the first Toy Story is taking place. Willy Wonka knew what he was doing. There was no seat for Augustus aboard that boat. He knew Augustus Gloop would fall in there. Glinda dropped Dorothy's house on the Wicked A Witch of the East, not the tornado, and uses her to gain control of Oz. One of the first things Glinda tells Dorothy is that she killed the witch. They praise her so she'll accept it, and when the Witch of the West comes along, who killed her sister? Dorothy. Glinda then puts the ruby slippers on Dorothy's feet but does not tell her that she can use them to go home. Instead, she sends Dorothy to Oz in possession of objects that a witch would murder her for. Dorothy, being forced into a situation where her only salvation is Oz and her worst enemy is the Queen inadvertently exposes the Wizard of Oz as a fraud and murders the Witch of the West. Now, who's left to rule Oz? Glinda Beep Witch of the North. She used Dorothy as an expendable pawn to gain control of Oz without having to leave her bubble. And when Dorothy is done upheaving the two biggest powers in Oz, Glinda sends her home and makes her think it was all a dream. Courage the dog is exaggerating normal occurrences into scary things cause he's a dog. Scooby-Doo is a show about draft dodgers during the Vietnam War. Barney from How I Met Your Mother isn't actually as much of a womanizer as Ted says he is. Ted's an unreliable narrator and could have presented this image of Barney to his kids either because he was jealous of Barney's relationship with Robin, or because he wants Barney to look unsuitable for her. That way, Ted's kids see Ted and Robin as soulmates. The real world in the Matrix movies is just another layer of the Matrix, designed specifically to appeal to people unwilling to conform to the normal Matrix. Humans in this outer matrix have confirmation of their belief that something was wrong, and get to indulge in the fantasy of being a heroic freedom fighter against the faceless evil machines, thus choosing to accept this false reality. The anomaly of the one is that he's capable of rejecting both realities, which is the reason why he had powers in the real world. Ditto our failed mu clones. Mr. Bean is an alien. That would explain his weird behavior and why he falls out of the sky at the beginning of every episode. Inception Leonardo's wedding ring is his totem, not the spinning top. If you watch, he only wears it in dreams, never takes it off or puts it on, and no one ever touches it. The top was Mal's and doesn't work for him which is why he always picked it up before a full spin. This is a little out there, but hear me out. The year 2015 we see in Back to the Future 2 is what would have happened if not for Chernobyl. Which leads to the argument that something in the movies, specifically 2 and 3, caused Chernobyl to happen. As you know, the year the characters are from is 1985, with Chernobyl happening in 1986. My take is, learning of the Libyans' attempt to procure plutonium, the Soviets send a spy to Hill Valley to learn more in order to prevent destabilizing relations during the Cold War. The spy arrives late, and in the timeline established by just the first movie, leaves. This is the timeline we see in the second movie, which is eventually erased. However, Doc Brown meddles with time again, and causes the events of the second and thus third movie. The spy witnesses the end of the third movie with a flying train, and assumes it's a new sort of aircraft. He investigates the scene after the main characters depart and finds wreckage of the DeLorean. Among the wreckage is some parts of the destroyed fusion reactor. Relaying findings to the Soviets, they get the impression that the US is significantly ahead of them in nuclear development. To combat this, they aggressively greenlight a bunch of nuclear projects, including a risky test that results in the Chernobyl meltdown. The resulting event scares people the world over and hinders nuclear research and progression. With lack of funding and roadblocks to more nuclear proliferation, fusion technology is never developed. Thus hampered, the timeline turns into hours. In the 2015 timeline shown in VTTF2, the nuclear research breakthroughs make the rest of the technology possible including flying cars and hoverboards. With some developments happening in the late 80s, 
the economy is lifted and the downturn of the early 90s does not happen. This has an effect of extending the garish fashion of the 80s forward, hence why the clothes look different as well. This was a Reddit post a while ago actually but the theory was, in Empire Strikes Back, when Luke tells R2 to stay in the ship at various times, he doesn't stay put, because the last person to tell him that was Anakin and he never came back. Bikini Bottom is a nuclear bomb testing site which is why the fish have legs at it, yes it's Bikini Atoll. James Bond's primary purpose is to be a distraction to keep attention off the spies who actually spy. Villains and other spies know him, he rarely takes an alias, he makes his presence known early on and keeps messing up operations for the villains, but other spies have already infiltrated their ranks and work while Bond does as much visible damage as possible to keep the others safe. Mad Max Folktale Theory, the movies and games all have different narrators and different takes on Max because they're all stories being told by people in the wasteland. All of these great deeds and accomplishments are being attributed to one man who may or may not have ever really existed. Double Matrix Theory, the Matrix has an inner core and then an outer shell designed to give the illusion of escape. It's basically a corral where they can keep the escaped humans until the defense mechanism, the machines, can purge them. This is why Neo could use his powers outside the Matrix, why Smith could leave, and why Cypher could go in without anyone noticing. My own theory that in the office when Andy proposes to Angela the people playing his parents are different actors because they are literally actors. As in he hired him to pose as his perfect parents because his own parents couldn't be bothered to come. The people in the season 9 episode Garden Party are his real parents, who clearly are dicks. The Jetsons and the Flintstones are living at the same time in a dystopian future where the haves live above the clouds and the have-nots are stuck on a wasted earth. The signs include that Flintstones celebrate things like Christmas and other holidays which doesn't make sense and the Great Gazoo Alien appears in both series. The Velociraptors in Jurassic Park were genetically modified to be larger so they would bring more visitors edit. Apparently they were genetically modified Velociraptors that were Utahraptors but based off the Dino Nucus. Thanks Reddit for telling me that I'm right and wrong and somehow incorrectly correct. Now can you stop killing my inbox? The Paw Patrol pups are part of a post-AI initiative attempting to train enhanced, but subservient, companion animals to replace the robots that almost destroyed humanity. Everyone in Adventure Bay slash Foggy Bottom slash etc. are paid actors who place the pups in coordinated training exercises. Which is why Mayor Humdinger gets away with all his beef. Parenthood has melted my brain. Joker from the Dark Knight was former military CIA, which explains his skills in weapons and interrogation, as well as that comment about the truck full of soldiers. Padme died because Darth Sidious used her to save Anakin. George R. R. Martin is having a difficult time finishing A Song of Ice and Fire because the fans already guessed everything and he's forcing himself to change up the story. Bill Cipher is still alive inside Stan Pine's mind after the ending of Gravity Falls. The clues leading to this conclusion, from fans, were so complex. They actually involved traveling to real locations and solving puzzles. Peter Pan kills any lost boy that grows into adulthood. Captain Hook and his pirates are all lost boys that have escaped to name to stop him. Jesse's girl as Stacy's mom. Sean Connery, John Patrick Mason, in The Rock was actually 007 who was captured while conducting espionage in the USA. After the events of the last Bond film with Connery, Diamonds are forever then imprisoned at Alcatraz. Miles Morales is considered a death omen among Peter Parkers who are aware of the multiverse. Edit, here's my explanation. Alright, as the other commenters are stating, Miles usually succeeds Peter as Spider-Man after Peter is killed. This happened in Spider-Verse, the Ultimate Comics, and I think it's implied that the same thing happened in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, though in an alternate universe. Not to mention, I bet a lot of people were expecting Peter to die at the beginning of the Miles Morales video game. Now, in Rick and Morty, a show in which the multiverse plays a huge role, alternate versions of characters tend to fulfill the same role which Ricks are generally aware of. Jerry's are awful, Morty's are stupid but necessary, Beth's must always be treated with kindness, etc. We see this in Spider-Man 2. 
Uncle Ben gets killed, Peter is romantically involved with someone with the initials MJ or Gwen Stacy, who usually meets a tragic end herself, he has a best friend named Harry Osborne who oftentimes ends up as an adversary, though may generally mean well. You get the idea. From here on in, it's pretty much all assumptions, so take everything with a grain of salt. While the idea of the multiversal community of doppelgangers is more often associated with Reed Richards, with the Council of Ricks even being a pun on Marvel's Council of Reeds, I personally believe that Peter may have the intellect to discover safe multiversal travel, make use of it and establish a similar community. And if these Peters can travel the multiverse, they may notice the patterns that we ourselves notice in all of these Spider-Man stories including Miles taking up the mantle of Spider-Man after that universe's Peter's usually violent death. Maybe they treat their Miles getting his powers like we would being diagnosed with a terminal illness. Now that being said, it may be possible that some Peters may not save their Miles or prevent him from getting his powers in order to save themselves. Personally, I think this can be explored further by having a villain who is hunting down versions of Miles from across the multiverse. There was a precedent with Wolf Spider from the Ultimate cartoon, though he was interested in hunting down all spider people for his own megalomania. This Wolf Spider would be hunting Miles either in the name of vengeance for all the Peters or believes he is saving Peters who have yet to die, in a perverted sense. This is just a thought I had a year or two ago and would really like to see it explored. Kaiu is a cancer patient. There's no other explanation for why his parents put up with a little beep and his incredibly terrible behavior. That brand in fact did not have the best story. Dennis Reynolds is a serial killer. Pepe Sylvia is just Charlie trying to pronounce Pennsylvania. Little late to the game, but the theory is that the kyber crystal in Luke's green lightsaber is the same one from Kegon Jens. After Kenobi defeats Darth Maul with his master's lightsaber, he would have kept it as a keepsake, despite rebuilding his own saber. It's likely he would have retrieved it and kept it with him after the Order 66 attack. After the Empire takes over, they destroy all artifacts and memory of the Jedi in their purge of changing the history, and most kyber crystals go towards powering the Death Star. Because of this, any lightsaber crystal would have been very difficult for Luke to find after he loses the Skywalker Saber. But we know he returns to Tatooine to complete his new lightsaber, likely returning to Ben Kenobi's home for components, where he would have found Kegon Jin's lightsaber and recycled its crystal. Pokédex entries are written by young trainers. When a professor sends a bunch of 10-year-olds out into the world to document Pokémon, of course the research can't be expected to be professional in the least. This is how we end up with the creepy legends of ghost Pokémon that might have been passed around as playground rumors, or impossible facts like Macargo being hotter than the actual sun. There's no reason why out of all the Pokémon professors, one of them couldn't have revised their Dex information and correct the tidbit about Pidgeot breaking the speed of light or Gardevoir creating black holes or Blazikens jumping over 30-story buildings. It's likely they leave the kids to their own devices without bothering to fact-check, and kids, being kids, are going to exaggerate. Doctor and Rose in the parallel world are perfectly happy with each other. Kevin from The Office is secretly involved in the money laundering scheme. I can't imagine a guy as smart as him saying so dumb otherwise. House died in the fire in the final episode. The last 10 minutes where he rides off into the sunset with his best friend Wilson are his final hallucination. Edit, change, dying dream, to, final hallucination, as he was hallucinating during the whole episode and it's more in keeping with the theory. Event Horizon is a prequel to the Warhammer 40k universe. Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon and Hello by Katy Perry are retellings of the same incident viewed from opposite sides. A tragic miscommunication where Katy thinks that she is being explicit that she isn't into him and just came to dance and Nicholas is interpreting everything she says as a heartfelt declaration of love and imagining their life together. Edit, Dragonette not Katy Perry. My bad. In Disney's Ratatouille, the old lady in the beginning of the movie living in the house next to the river is the food critic, Anton Ego's, mother. In the flashback scene where he eats the Ratatouille you can see similarities of the house from the beginning, her face and I think the bridge. The reason each It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode starts with a date and time is because they're all testifying against each other in court. Pawnee is the bad place. May your day be filled with joy and happiness. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more quality content every day.